Good evening, this is Roxana for Abitiva. Today, I'm gonna try something different. I am going to make these, not every day, but I'm gonna try to try to make them happen as many days as possible because basically it's kind of like uh, keeping tabs on what I'm doing to see if I'm staying the same or if I'm improving with time. And the reason why I'm doing this is because I have something that I want to say specifically, but I also want to start with how the day went. So I guess it's a blog in a, in a sense, because I'm going to highlight the two or three things that I actually managed to do today. Um, it was my day off and I managed to do laundry, film a video, edit the video, post the video, and I just came home from watching the fireworks. It's the only part of 4th of July that I actually care about because I can create content fairly quickly and post it on all the social media. It's kind of an experiment I'm working on to see how many social media platforms I can handle at one time because if I want to add clients, I want to see if I can keep up with like two or three of mine plus whatever I do for them. I don't know, I'm just playing with it right now. Uh, we didn't have work today at the shop because it was 4th of July. I have to go to work tomorrow and I am taking the bus. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know I posted a little, like a five second run on the bus. <coughs> because sometimes people don't understand that when I tell them we're in, we're in knee deep in, in, in issues because we don't have both cars running. And now the one that's running is making a sound. It's scaring the crap out of me right now. So... Uh, yeah, those are things that are happening at the moment. But the reason why I decided to shoot this quick video now is because I've been thinking about something for at least the last couple of weeks and it's been weighing heavy in my heart and I wanted to share thoughts with you to see if you agree with me or not. Um, the thing about, and this video is not edited, so if you hear a sound or something, I apologize. The neighbors are taking showers. They're still fireworks going on outside there's stuff happening all around me I'm as quiet as I can be in this room and hopefully you don't hear that much but I can hear my neighbor showering right now so it is what it is anyway the reason why I decided to come up and talk to you guys for a second is because there's something that's been bothering me lately and if you've been watching the other channel then you know that I mentioned that I'm writing a book it's not so much to publish as it is for me to deal with some demons that have been plaguing me my whole life. I was severely bullied when I was a young kid and I was very much um, online bullied a few years ago and my reactions were, basically the reactions for this time around were kind of like reacting to triggers from what happened before and I didn't realize that until much, much later. I was talking to a friend of mine online and he was mentioning that, you know, the people that bully you and that annoy you online, they're just, you know, sometimes it's some idiot that has 10, 10 accounts and whatnot. And, and, and I wish I would have thought about that when I was bullied online in 2018, 2019 and 2020, because after everything happened and the deletion did not happen and all this, so I was going to delete all the channels and just walk away and, um, I'm not going to get into the specifics, but it was bad. I was going to delete. When I say delete, it's a euphemism for what was really going to happen. And I tried. I just wasn't successful. So the thing about it is, and this is the part that I want you to, to, to think about, is that later on I found out that the 100 accounts that were bothering me were actually 5 or 6 people controlling 10 to 20 accounts each. It was just a little group of 7 or 8 people, or 5 or 6 something like that. It was not more than 10 people running one, about 100 accounts that we were able to identify. It is scary. When, when you hear about people bullying people online, it's really scary to think that some people have no life. They will tell you that they're living their best life, but they spend their entire time online. And the easiest way you can figure that out is because 
they know everything that you're doing. In order for them to know everything that you're doing, they have to keep an eye on all of your accounts all the time. Think about that for a second. What kind of life can somebody like that have? Not, not, not a really great one. But that's not what I want to talk about right now. What I want to talk about is the effect of bullying and how the people that are meant to help us, specifically mental health advisors and positivity gurus and all um, social workers, every single one of these people tells you that you're responsible for your actions and that you, at the end of the day, you allowed it to happen. And I'm not talking about the actual bullying, I'm biting my the eye not talking about the actual bullying I'm talking about your reaction to the actual bullying in other words they're victim blaming and none of us notice that when it happens but I was thinking about that the other day exactly why is it my fault that somebody decided to make my life a living hell when I was 13 14 15 whatever age I was I was 15 in my case was I was 15 but for you that are sitting here watching this video right now you probably 13 12 how are you supposed to process somebody bullying you and why is it your responsibility to get over it you're not the one who did something wrong in my case what i did was that i fell in love with a boy that was my age who was 15 also who happened to be my neighbor about two blocks away from my house and he was the ex-boyfriend of the girl that started the bullying that was my big crime mind you they had broken up and he had dated two other people before he started dating me. So clearly she had mental problems of her own. And now that I look back on it, I can realize that yes, she had huge mental issues. But that doesn't change the fact that she and her crew decided to bully me, a 15 year old. And at the end of the day, if I ever bring that up and they are in front of me, they're probably going to say, well, we were kids. Well, so was I, and I didn't bully anybody. That's not something you do unless you have issues. Let me be very clear and repeat that again. People who bully have issues, whether it's projection or whether it's feeling like they are not worthy of anything, so they decide to enforce this fear because nobody cares about them and so they figure if they make people fear them then they'll be uh, popular or something whatever reason you want to give the person who bullies yeah they have issues and they want everybody around them to be as miserable as they are the problem with that mentality is that when you go to a psychological whether it's a psychiatrist a psychologist a social worker anybody they're going to tell you that how you deal with it is going to get you out of this. That doesn't, that doesn't heal the scars. I went through three different treatments, the three different types of uh, mental health experts because this thing messed me up for life. It didn't help because at the end of the day, here I am, 57 years old, feeling sorry for myself at moments because I still don't know how to handle people hating me that much. I can't. You know, I just realized very recently, and by very recently I mean the last 48, 72 hours, that I'm still afraid of posting online because I'm worried that somebody's going to come hating on me. My boss out me on social media because he insisted on taking a picture of me and my co-workers and I kept saying I didn't want to be in the picture and he forced me basically to be on the picture and he's taken several there's several pictures around with me and and I explained to him you know the reason why I try not to be in the pictures is because of this happened and I didn't give him the full version but I gave him a 2020 the, 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 the highlight and I included the deletion by the way and his reaction was because I told him I just don't want them to call here and try to get me fired just because they hate me that much and he started laughing and he goes well you know the only thing I can do is tell them oh, well she does her job well I don't know what to tell you and he started laughing and as soon as he said that it hit me it really is that simple for, for everybody around me to see that 
It wasn't that simple for me. Until now, I have been very scared of posting on social media. I have started and stopped, started and stopped, started and stopped several times over. I'm hoping this time I stay for good. But the message that I want to leave with you, if you have ever been bullied, just like people tell you it's not your fault, it's also not on you how you react to it. There is, there's millions of books written about how to react to bullying and all this other stuff, and nine times out of ten, the person writing them has never been bullied. Or not to the extent that you or I have been bullied. And people keep trying to give us one solution to fit everybody when everybody is different. How you deal with something doesn't mean that it's going to work for me and vice versa. I can sit here all day long telling you how I'm dealing with this. That doesn't mean it's going to help you. It might make you feel better to know that somebody else has been bullied as bad as you have. But it might not help you in terms of what to do about it. And that's what I want to leave you with. I can tell you personally, I've had a pretty good life up to now. Do I think that I have self-sabotage many a times? Absolutely. More times than I care to count. And the reason for that is because I remember how my self-esteem was when I was 14. And I also remember how bad it got when I turned 15. I have made many decisions that should have been career ending, marriage ending, family ending, everything. Because I've self-sabotaged my entire life because of what happened to me when I was 15. And unfortunately, sometimes when you're in the middle of living your life, you don't realize that you're still reacting to something that happened to you 10, 15 years ago. That is the message for today. Let's see how we're doing the next time I come here. Thanks for watching. Bye.